So not only is climbing a 20,000 foot mountain difficult, try not producing one show, but 10 shows. That's what we're talking about today here on On The Fly Filmmaking. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. Hey everyone, I am Mary Lou Mandel, your host for On The Fly Filmmaking, and I've got a rocking guest here today, Yuka Hilden of The Dudesons. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, and thank you for the song, ACDZ. Just... Man, that's rock and roll. Right, that was the whole point. We wanted to like pump it up. Yeah. We wanted to make sure we're like, everybody's ready, they're on board, because we're talking about Ultimate Expedition, which is an amazing YouTube Red show, and I'm like, so impressed about it. And like the more that I like learned about the show, the more impressed I was with your production and with what you pulled together. Yeah, and with the fact that we're actually all back home alive. We all made it. <laughs> we, we, we all made it. Yeah, that's spoiler alert. miracle. Because there are two episodes in. It's every Wednesday on YouTube Red. Two episodes have already been aired. The next episode's tomorrow, so definitely go catch up on that. Yeah. And spoiler alert, I guess everybody made it. Yeah, I mean, everybody made it back home alive. They made it back home in alive. In one piece, maybe. We actually added a cast member because yes. uh, Steve-O ended up saving a street dog. Yes. Street dog from uh, from Peru. Yes. And Wendy is now back in the States. Oh my gosh, I love Wendy's my favorite. And we're definitely going to talk about the cast members a little bit later. But before we get into Ultimate Expedition itself, I want to talk about you, Yuka, and your history in production. Like, this is not your first production. You've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I'm about 75 years old. So. 75 years old. Girl, you look good. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes. I feel 75 years old from my body because I've been destroying it slowly, but if, if mentally I'm like maybe six or seven. I don't know what you think, Wes. Yeah. You mean somewhere in the middle? Five. Yeah. Five. Yes, yeah. <laughs> definitely. But never lose your inner child, right? Never. Well, that's why I, I can definitely see how creative you are, like using that inner child. Like it's it's helping you with all these creative things. So Yuka is part of the Dude Sins, which is a international prank troupe. Or a stunt troop, stunt daredevils, troop? daredevils. Are, yeah. Oh my gosh! Like, that's where I, I I see the kind of stuff, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're gonna jump into another pit of weird things. Yeah. Like I, th- I'm surprised you're you're here in one piece. But. I, th- I think the good thing I'm from Finland, so we we got pretty free laws, so we can run around naked, we can blow up stuff, we can crash motorcycles and jump cars. And there's not much liability, and there's nobody that can sue you, so that's why it's easy to pull oh, up these things. Oh, I see. Things. Okay. So how long have you guys been doing that? Ah, we our first movie came out in 1997. Oh my gosh! So, so we're dear looking Lord, at that's like a long 20 time. years. <laughs> yeah. So but your, it's your been journey, quite an adventure. Yeah, your journey from there, 1997, with your first show to now, Ultimate Advent, uh, Expedition, 20 years of craziness. Yeah. Is that right? No, are we at more? 97, 2007, 2000. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, 20 years. <laughs> I was like, God, can I count? I'm feels, not good at that. I feel math. old now. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, we're just getting started. Yes. Uh, it's been quite a ride. Mm-hmm. It's been fun from, you know, your childhood dream. I come from, First of all, I come from a small town, 500 people. I was tipping over sleeping cows. My dad can't read or write, but I always had a, had a dream and an ambition to make something big and something great. Yeah. And I hope I'm going towards that because life is a ride and a journey. And yeah. You got to enjoy the journey, not the destination. Definitely. So I'm, uh, it's, it's been a blast. And the latest thing that we got to do, Ultimate Expedition, expeditions just blew my mind yeah that was so great and and you guys are with rabbit film so that yeah. is a production company that you're we own uh, so in. we have yeah that's that's our production company yes. we own it and we're the biggest independent production company in finland yeah we won you know several emmy awards we won a finnish oscar for our movie in 2006 um and we do about 15 20 big shows from prime time to adventure reality every yeah. year yeah yeah i was then, looking at your website and there's like it's very varied the kind of stuff that you guys produce yeah and you know we we want to produce something that moves people, makes them feel, and we want to make something special. And that's why we say we believe in positive anarchy. And yeah. that's whatever show we take, we put that unique twist, that uh, or original idea into mm-hmm. it, and then go out with it. Yeah. Outside shows, we do Saturday Night Live, we do Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Hollywood Game Night, Shark Tank. Yeah. But those are the only ones we've done, and everything else is just our original, unique ideas. And and uh, I run the U.S. office. we got about seven people working for us, mm-hmm. and uh, and we got a few shows in the in the cooker yeah i love that and it's and being international and like having these shows that are in finland and then you're taking them now and translating not n- not necessarily translating but you're you're reformatting them for an you're american sort of audience. adapting and making yeah. taking a look at it okay we did this show in finland how could we make it fit the u.s yes. scenery and uh 
I mean, Ultimate Expedition, we did the first season in Finland for the biggest primetime network. Mm -hmm. We did it with very traditional stars and just one show. Mm -hmm. And we took it to U.S. and we, you know, thought that it'd be great to kind of combine traditional stars with influencers and with, with, with stars that have huge digital following. Yes. And put them together and give them their own cameras and sort of film and a dedicated crew to film their point of view from the show. Yes. So we're not putting out just one main show, but all the cast members are also posting two mini episodes per episode that we're putting on. Wow, I love it. So that's it. over 200 pieces of content, and it was crazy to go out there. But at the same time, you're like, you know, you got someone, an Olympian like Gus Kenworthy, sharing tent with Steve O. Yes. And when do you get to see the fact that Gus Kenworthy is vlogging like, man, this is the toughest challenge I've ever done, and I'm an Olympian, and at the same time you hear a fart, Yes. Next to him, and he's like <laughs> looking, turning the camera, and Steve was peeing in a bottle, and asking, "Hey, Gus, you ever, you ever fart when you pee?" Oh my god! <laughs> and gosh. then at the same time, you know, he's like, "Oh, sorry, dude," opening up the zipper, and he's like <laughs> getting the, right. the getting the fart out of the tent. You got an Olympian and a jackass in the same right. tent. And but, I love like, the you characters. You get to sneak peek into the the real of the things where in traditional shows you just have a sit down interview, um, as a boom mic, and right. somebody interviewing and asking, "So how is the journey so far?" And you'd get mm -hmm. sort of you know answers, but you you can't deep as intimate or get to know the the guys or the, the stars as well. Great. So then let's make sure everybody knows what we're looking at here. Let's take a look at the trailer for Ultimate Expedition. You will try to climb a 20,000 foot mountain that is called Toklara. If you're not healthy enough or if you don't have the physical capability, you will be eliminated. My ankle is held together with lots of screws. Is that a problem? I think one screw might be a little loose. <laughs> of common sense was telling me not to climb that mountain. Man, there's no way I can do this. I don't know. This is crazy. I haven't even been camping before. <gasps> I want my Light daughter to watch this and say, wow, my mom climbed a mountain. Welcome to the top of the world. <laughs> you gotta stick together in this. All of us are in this together. Let's go. Uh, I came here for a reason. I'm not leaving till I get that accomplished. Four months ago, I finished chemotherapy. And now I'm here. Damn, that's a good feeling. I've accomplished so much that I thought I could never do. I'm going to make it up there. I have a wife and three kids. I would love for them to see me at the top of that mountain with my hands in the air. No one's holding me back from my own life. I feel like a champion right now. Woo! Awesome. So impressive. And that's only one of the 10 shows that's essentially being produced <laughs> because there's the the mainstream looking show, which is like one of the biggest shows that YouTube Red has. Is it the biggest show YouTube Red has it's, produced? It's the biggest non-scripted show. I believe. Biggest non-scripted show. And then additionally, each cast member has their own vlog giving you specific insight into their experience. So yeah, and it was all designed in there like, you know, Steve O's content is Steve O's content. So mm -hmm. he gets choked out by Chuck Liddell. And if yeah. you want to see that, you go to his channel and his fans kind of learn about the show as well. So we wanted to create this ecosystem of audiences yes. that will all kind of spiral into this vortex of views, hopefully. Yeah. And, and in a way that everybody benefits so that the cast members get to tell their point of view and their mm -hmm. story through their channels and, uh, and the show will get seen. Yeah, which I think is really, really brilliant, and it's it's not something that other shows have really been utilizing. Yeah, I think the big problem with these digital platforms have been that traditional production companies don't necessarily understand what the digital stars are doing, but they're doing all these big shows for digital mm -hmm. platforms with digital stars, and there's the disconnect. Like right. You could put them in that awkward V where they're hosting something <laughs> with a mic on their hand, mm -hmm. and they're already feeling like... This is not my place. I'm feeling uncomfortable. House. But the audience is also feeling uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So we we wanted to crack that knot and wanted to create something groundbreaking. And YouTube and Google was really great to work with because they gave us tools to do it. Yeah. And not only, you know, the cast gets to post all this footage, they get to monetize it. Yes. Which obviously is their uh, bread on you know butter on their bread. Mm -hmm. So we we give them content that they own and get to post from the show. Where traditionally I walk into a show 
like this and I would film something and I'd ask like can I show that on my YouTube channel to our fans yeah and they're like no you can't oh well here you definitely yeah can. well this you guys we are groundbreaking yeah um, but not a lot of shows do that you know yes. I walk into Jimmy Kimmel and try to shoot something backstage mm -hmm. and they're like no no you can't show anything you can't show any spoilers any teasers where we believe in more you give more you get yes I agree. And then like giving more like, you know, Popcorn Talk is a digital network as well, like After Buzz, our sister network, very digital network. And so I love that YouTube is utilizing this like digital platform and utilizing the influencers in a way that's going to like exactly create an ecosystem. Yeah. But also using throwing into the bunch like we have Chocolate Dale. Uh, legendary UFC yes. world champion. We have Steve O, who's been in blockbuster movies yes. and box office hits. So you kind of take both sides of the world and put them together yeah. and have them feed into each other. Mm -hmm. And then all the cast members had a bigger reason to be there. They're not yeah. just attention horse. Right, great. You know, so then let's look. I've got a list of the cast members I want to go through here and kind of talk about your reason for casting each of these folks. So first up, let's look at uh, Sniper Wolf. So she is a gamer YouTuber. Yeah. yeah. So Sniper Wolf is the biggest female YouTuber at the mm -hmm. moment. I think she did 130 million views last month, and uh, and she's got an amazing attitude. She's mm -hmm. uh, she's very quick with her comments, and uh, she's a gamer. She's never camped before. She's yes. never even been camping before. Right. But she's got balls of steel. She's got a attitude and will and guts. Yes. So she wanted to take on this opportunity and to see what she can do yeah and I, like, I like if she can it. actually push her limits and go and try to do something which seemed impossible right in her little personal like side notes in the episode where she's talking about like I've never pushed my body to this point I don't do this but I really want to see myself do I think it's wonderful yeah and also there's a, I mean you know how the whole YouTube world there's a lot of hate and there's a lot of love which mm -hmm. is part of it but uh, I think Sniper Wolf also feels that there's haters in the world so she wanted to show them yeah. what she is made of and she is made of steel yes like, girl she walked you know well you'll see in the episodes but she never been camping but she's there sleeping in the same tents pooping in the same hole we are in fourteen thousand yeah. feet where there's only half the amount of oxygen we have now so your brain is pounding your yeah. body is aching and everything's failing except but she's for steve there. whose body was perfect yeah so he was, he's just a, he's a machine <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> but uh and, and also i know that sniper wolf uh, grew up with some with some struggle yeah. So it's not she she had a personal story to tell that right. that sets an example and she set her own life and all own goals and she's very successful at it. That's believe amazing. in your dreams, believe in your own heart. Yeah, and I love and that seems kind of to be a through line with all of the characters that you've cast on this. So next let's look at uh, Furious Pete. So he's a cancer survivor. He's an unbelievable man first of all. I mean, 6 months ago or 9 months ago now, he had testicular cancer yeah. he was in chemo he did not know if he's gonna be alive but then all of a sudden he's climbing the most beautiful mother nature right i think a it, it 20 was foot, there was 20 000 foot mountain in tokarahu in peru yeah and uh and that story just his fight against cancer and and an example and how inspiring he is and mm -hmm. how he still has that sparkle of life in him yeah uh most uh that's just uh makes me think of my life and how happy I am on you know how much I value my health yes definitely definitely and then we've got Chachi Gonzalez who is a dancer she was a dancer when she was what 15 she won America's best dance crew yeah. feisty I think Mexican heritage mm -hmm. uh, Texan yeah um, uh, an unbelievable sweet girl um, who grew up with some with some str struggle from her parents or from her management and yeah. she's been taken advantage of mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden she's taking her life by the bull by the, by the horns yes. and you know making it her own like taking control being terrified never having advice growing up from being a teenager to this year she's 22 today oh happy birthday Chachi. happy birthday Chachi. <laughs> <laughs> so she's you know t takes control of her life and makes it what she wants to yeah. make it. That's a scary leap. Yeah. And to even survive those teenage years with all that success. So, um, and and she's she's feisty. Yeah. And nobody can run over her. But she's also she's tiny, but she's a dancer and she's very <coughs> fit. So she mm -hmm. she's really good at the mountain. She's yeah. trying. She's carrying the same size backpack as I am. Yeah. <laughs> and she's never seen snow before. Oh, and then she did. 
And then, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, so then we've also got Just Rain, who's Jasmine Singh. Just Rain, he's a, he's, he's an, uh, he's a Sikh, Indian Sikh, uh-huh. a religious guy wearing a turban, uh, grew up being bullied. Are you wearing a skirt? <laughs> kind yeah. of a thing. And uh, always kind of fought for his own culture, mm-hmm. uh, being bullied. And now he's here to tell our story. And he's just an unbelievable, funny comedian. Yeah. Uh, and he had a funny story. Like, everybody would bully him because he was wearing the Indian clothes. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's, they're all asking, are you a girl? And one day in, like, elementary school, he just whipped up without pants, like, without underwear on. Yeah. He just whipped up his skirt. He's like, no, I'm a boy. And he chased everybody <laughs> with his little wee-wee out. Yes. <laughs> but uh, he, he's a cool guy. He's... Yeah. he's uh, He's witty, he's funny, and in the first episode, he's like, he called his mom when he signed up for the show. He's like, I'm going to go and climb a 20,000-foot mountain. And his mom's like, why in the hell would you do Kana on a Quran? Yeah. And that's in, like, uh, Punjabi language. I know I murdered the way to say it, but Punjabi means white people shit. Like, why would you yeah. do the shit that white people do? Yes. <laughs> so, but he, yeah, he was, uh, you look at him. That's what, what uh, uh, some other of us brown people call WPS. What's that? White people shit. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but okay. Yeah. But it, like, I think it was really great because I loved his story. Where at first, like, he's like maybe like a little bit worried about it and not sure. Like, oh yeah, like you know, my kind of people don't do this. But then he's like, no, nobody. I had nobody to look up to when I was trying to be a comedian. There was nobody that looked like me, and I wanted to do this. So, him doing this project is just showing like. You don't have to have people who look like you doing it before you in order to to climb that mountain. Yeah, I mean, like it's very a, literally climb that mountain. Who's there to tell you what you can do? Yeah, like you can do whatever you want as if you believe in it and mm-hmm. if you put enough hard work into it and just slowly take baby steps towards the dream and the yeah. goal and eventually you'll you'll conquer. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay, so the next up we've got Nikki Baker. Nikki Baker is one of the first YouTubers, uh, YouTube pranksters. Uh, she was a young mom, mm-hmm. and and moms kick butt. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, and we, you know, we we know her from past from working with her, and she kind of is going through the struggle because she was a young mom. Did she not live life enough, or was did she like miss something in her career because mm-hmm. she became a mother? and has a family. So she's going through that battle. But she also wanted to show her daughter what a badass her mom is. Yeah, how old and, is her uh, kid now? She, I think she she's three, four, or five. Oh, still young. Yeah, still young. <laughs> I think young. she's five-ish. Four is five-ish. Yeah. Oh, good. Then what a great Let's say between model. two and 20. <laughs> okay, somewhere between two and 20. Not Still living at home. <laughs> yeah. Definitely still living at home. Well, like, what a great, like, example to show your children. You know, like, yes, mom can do this. Moms can do this. No, moms is- can kick butt. I mean, I uh, I shot an additional bit with her where we did the birth simulator. Yeah. And it was me and her doing it, and I got this electric things attached to me all over my <laughs> body, and I'm still in cramp. Yeah. And I did it a month ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, and she okay. was fine. Awesome. And then she we- walked away smiling. Good. Oh, good. Good. And I know she was one early on was having difficulty with the the air levels, the oxygen levels. Yeah. And the fun thing about this show is like when you go to 20,000 foot or even 14,000 feet, you don't know how people acclimate. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. And it's such a social, mental and uh, physical challenge. Uh, And Nikki Baker, she was really struggling kind of adjusting to that altitude. Yes. Uh, But it doesn't, you know, you might be struggling for a week but then you get fine and you you don't have any struggle and somebody else will start struggling so you don't know usually the first people that get cut from the expeditions are young fit men yeah because they push their body and they push it too much and they don't know how to listen to it oh. like on the first season mm-hmm. that we did for finish network we had an nhl player who just retired in the shape of his life he's one of the first guys that gets cut gets ah. altitude sickness and there's all these moms and there's everybody else is still continuing. There's this little tiny radio VJ that kept on carrying his backpack because she could and he couldn't. Yeah. So that's what makes this really surprising and interesting is that you have an Olympian and you have a mother, but who's going to make it on top? Right, because it's it's not necessarily about your, your physical fitness. Of course, you want to be physically fit, but there's so many new factors that you can't, you, you don't know how to deal with. Yeah, and all of a sudden, if your body starts failing mm-hmm. and your brain goes numb, how are you going to start acting socially? Yeah. Are you going to be a wimpy little kid? Or are you going to complain? Or are you going to just think about you? Because when you're an expedition, we are responsible of each other. Yeah. And the way we judge them is obviously all these f- three factors, but also 
would I take that person to Mount Everest to my team and yeah. climb with him to try to summit the tallest mountain in the world? Yeah. If they're socially someone that you can't stand, you're not gonna want to climb with them. Yeah, which is something that we, we talk about a lot on the show about like being in a crew, like in, in a production when you're working with a crew, like these people you're with, like that's your team. Like, and I think that's a really great mindset. Is this someone I would climb Mount Everest with? Yeah. You know, because they're good people and part of this team. All right, so like, next up, let's look at Olympian Gus Kenworthy. Yeah, an and amazing guy. And by the way, congrats, Gus. He just made the the, the U.S. Olympic team. Yeah. For for uh, South Korea. Congratulations, Gus. That's great. And he starts competing next month. Mm -hmm. So at the same time as he's competing against himself in this show, he's competing against the world. Yeah. Um, but he he knew he was gay when he was five. Mm -hmm. He was afraid to come out of the closet because he was afraid of losing all the sponsors. But then, you know, he found courage to come out and uh, he's the first action sports athlete and an Olympian to come out of the closet. Yeah. And he became a huge inspiration for the rest of the world. And he's young, successful, handsome, and, and just kills it in the show. He's, he's really good. But he has his struggle of his own. Mm -hmm. And obviously an amazing example out there for the world. Too. Was he the one who was like... Like a real estate agent, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of his, he's so witty. He's so, uh, he's actually surprising. He's an athlete who can talk. Yeah, which is <laughs> he's rare. really funny and witty, and he comes out and like. He knows social media in a way that not a social, not a lot of influencers, you know, get it at the same level. He's got these different formats he's doing for Instagram. He's always tall in the climbing the tall buildings and taking a picture on the net, or then like. In Peru, the mannequins are just crazy. Some are missing eyes, some are missing fingers. So he did this whole series around like the crazy mannequins of Peru. And he went yeah. and interviewed them and showed all these crazy. Oh my gosh, so he's a creative also. So he's very yes. creative. That's wonderful. And then we've got Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell, a world champion, a man with a huge heart. And he um, he's retired. Yeah. So he needed a mental reset because he kind of lost it for a while and what to do next. Mm -hmm. So he just, and the great thing about this so, show is we're there for two weeks climbing, pushing our limits. We're going to be struggling. We're going to be winning and, you know, feeling the joy of pushing our limits. And it's all, we had no cell phone reception, no social media. So after two days of thinking, wonder what's going on in Facebook or in Instagram or in YouTube, you kind of zone out and you start living in the now. Yeah. And you have all these great examples, people, friends that you start calling, you know, you get to know each other so well, and you can share your stories and kind of start thinking about yourself. What do I want to do in life? Yeah. And what are my priorities? Where did I come from? Where am I? Where do I want to get to? Yeah, you get like a little bit of clarity with a lot of clarity disconnected. from disconnected from the modern day right. noise, the craziness, and how available you have to be, and how like uh, online you gotta be at all times. There, you have none of that, and yeah. you woo and cool down. Because when you think about a normal day, you wake up in the morning, you have kids or not, you have school or work, you go there, you come back home. If you got kids, you play with them, build some Legos, put them to bed, and then you got an hour. What yeah. am I gonna do? Maybe what's YouTube or Netflix or something, yeah. and then just crash. When do you start thinking about what do I want to do? Like, yeah, what does the little you hard. guy in here? Yeah. But when you're there, you get <laughs> that's all you have is pushing yourself, doing something epic and awesome, like repelling down 200 feet or uh, vertically ice climbing a wall with ice picks and axes and things. And, and then you come down to the base camp, you're exhausted, but you got the beautiful scenery and you're thinking about what you've done and what you've achieved and what you want to do in life. Yeah, and like what you are capable of. Yeah, that's yeah, one like thing. It gives you like all this like um, encouragement where you're like, oh, if I can climb a mountain, then I can definitely achieve X, Y, Z dream. Like Leah Sniperwolf, mm -hmm. she did not believe that she could make it all the way to base camp. Mm -hmm. But when she does, she wants to quit five times on the way. But finding the motivation and the inspiration from around you and from the people around you, supporting it and saying, you can do this. She makes it and does it. And she's like, wow, I thought I can't, I can never do this. I was in pain, I was crying, but I did it. I did and it. And you, you kind of tap into that, you know, ocean-sized potential within you yeah. that you can start using for anything in life. Because if I could do that, I can do that too. Yes. And that's such an encouraging and, and, a, and a strong and powerful message to send out there to people. Uh, and I think nowadays, especially, I think it's something that we want to encourage that people don't just sit down on their sofa and watch TV or just play games. Go out there, live life, do things, respect nature, yeah. and push your limits. Get in it. Okay, and then like my favorite of all of your cast members is 
is not only Steve-O, but Wendy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Steve-O. Yes. Of Jackass. A legend. He, uh, he's a legend, and I've known him for over 14 years. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he's, a, he's an amazing showman, jokester, stuntman, crazy, batshit crazy. Fearless. But what Gosh. he shows in this show, oh and what gosh, his motivation is, like... My biggest mountain to climb is not to care what other people think about me, but just to be me. Like he's always, he told me when I was talking on the phone before, I was like, why does, all, uh, why does every video have to end up in hospital or in jail? Because that's not me necessarily anymore. Yeah. And now he shows this completely other side. It's not like it's a way. He, he's still got the editors. He's still bat, batshit crazy. He gets choked out by Chuck Liddell. He, you know front flips into this pond that has this much water oh and God. sharp rocks all over the place. But at the same time, he tells about his passion with, you know, saves a street dog from Peru, brings him to uh, the US. Yeah. Or talks about how vulnerable he is from inside. And it's just a beautiful story. I've never seen him this real publicly. And yeah. that's the Steve-O I fell in love with that I know as a friend from 14 years ago. Yes. And then, I, so then with that, I want to say like how much I love how real it is like so it does like there, there's the, the produced show right and like like i understand how reality shows are a lot of people who like work in production like we get like a story is being told in a certain way but when you're getting that much footage like you're not going to have any option but to show real emotions yeah but we what we want to do is it's a real show it's an organic real show there is no production decisions. There's no like trickery or pony show that yeah. you have to put on to survive this elim elimination. Uh, we wanted to keep and try to push everybody's limit and try to get everybody on top of that mountain. Yes, and it but we were so clearly, uh, you know, aware that not everybody's gonna make it. Yeah, and with the show like this, you get great people that are motivated, are passionate about making the content. Uh, like you can't write, <coughs> you can't write. Things like Steve-O adopting a street dog. You can't write that. That's it's like so we, beautiful. Hopefully we put hope back into reality. We put reality yeah. back to reality TV. Yeah. Because it became so scripted talking in the kitchen and being like, ah, oh, you know, this and that. Like, yeah. And because it, it, it's such a positive group and it's such a positive thing, you don't see that same like, okay, we need these, these two people to get in a fight. So let's produce a fight. Yeah. You know, and they're like, I never even said that, but we made it into a fight. But because you're not doing that, this is all coming from a very positive place. Yeah. It's not it's like all to coming create from a good drama. Heart. It's like, but obviously Life's everybody's drama. gonna, you know, once you start struggling and once yeah. you've been there climbing and not necessarily showering and pooping in the same hole for a week, week and a half, yeah. it's gonna be emotions. Yeah. But we wanna show a positive journey, how these people evolve, how they went on this adventure of a lifetime through positivity yeah. and not try to produce drama. Yes. But, you know, people will lose their shit. Right. And, and then, like, the drama that comes up is going to be more organic. It's real. Yeah. It's yeah. not the same as, like, okay, we need we need this person to, like, slap homegirl in the face. Yeah. Really? We don't, no, we don't that, need that. That's not us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we say, like, in, in Rabbit Films and in the Dutchess, we, we want to be real and we want to be genuine and authentic and and the audiences they're so they see everything has to be transparent people know this now yeah. and can read yes. <laughs> uh, between the lines and uh you know, hopefully this is the first step towards making <laughs> right. TV great again. And then having so many different uh, viewpoints, like with all the different vlogs, there's no hiding. Yeah. You know, yeah, because somebody's going to say it. Yes. Like, like it is. Yeah. Like definitely somebody is going to like crack and say it like it is. So might as well just be authentic all the way through. Yeah. Which I think is a really brilliant model in the creativity. So was that from you? That, I mean, first of all, the, the show idea comes from Finland. Mm -hmm. Our our parent companies in Finland and we have an amazing creative director there, Tuomas Summanen and, and our CEO, Olli Suominen, that kind of run that side. And we get these ideas from there that are existing and then it's just easier to adapt it. The way we produced the show in the US was from this side, because I, I started from traditional TV. Yeah. But I live in the digital world. I vlog daily, do just vlog, mm -hmm. I put out videos. So I kind of knew how to put these things together. and I. I get it when Sniper Wolf says that, you know, I made 130 million views last month. That equals quite a lot of money. Why would I go and do a, a, a cable show yeah. that will pay me barely nothing compared and will give me all these rules and won't let me post? 
compared to me just doing whatever I want and banking on it. And banking on it, yeah. And, and this is something that I've been saying for a really long time with like other filmmakers that I know, like forever. Like I was like, it's in digital. Like with the whole monetization changing in YouTube where I'm like, this is a free platform where like other places, you want to show your movie, you have to get distribution. You have to find somebody to like somewhere to host it, somewhere to put it. Not like YouTube is a free place to put things up and show your work to the world. So, yeah. and you living in the digital world, coming from traditional and going into digital, like how do you feel about that? I, you obviously like are for it. Like, <clears throat> I, I, I love both. I uh, think that you gotta put them together in the future uh -huh. to survive. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, traditional world has huge crews that you have to be respectful to mm -hmm. work with. You have to be able to listen to everybody and play ball. You have to be a team player. And there's beginning, middle, and end mm -hmm. in the stories. Digital is usually, there's a lot of one man armies yeah. out there that can just do what the heck ever they want, but they know their stuff better than anybody. They know mm -hmm. exactly why the fans want and what. Yeah. And it's a huge learning curve from coming from traditional to digital and starting to edit videos. It's like, no, 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 no. First, within the first 15 seconds, you get to show that cute button, that funny face. That'll hook the audience. And yeah. then they'll watch over here. And here you'll put a thumb and say, you know, why don't you like this video? And you'll get more retention yeah. <laughs> for the video. It's all these little tricks. But then how do you put those two things together? Because I see TV, you do the to a large audience. Digital, YouTube, you talk to that one person, make it intimate. Yes. And to put that together, make it still look like a movie, but cut into the sort of moments that matter where they can sneak peek and feel personal with you that you're really caring about them because yeah. you got to care about them yeah and really listen to what they say <coughs> but i i feel great about both worlds and, yeah. and uh, i feel like us as a company have a big upside on it because we live in both worlds yes we do live to broadcast tv for the primetime networks but we also do you know put out five videos a week to our right. youtube channel but that's exactly like that mold that you have for yourself is kind of what you've built around this show where you're like yes we've got this like fully produced beautiful cinematic looking show that feels traditional and then you've got these very intimate straight to camera by the the star like yeah. speaking directly to the audience melding them together to create a larger piece yeah. of content you know like two you said 200 pieces of content a yeah. week Two, uh, no, no, 200 pieces all together. Okay, all together. So 10 episodes and then 20 pieces of content gotcha. per cast member. Yeah. Plus then some additional. Right. Clips. And then, you know, and then but, you've got, like, uh, but, the but, but not media also, stuff. not also the, the other sort of mini episodes and, and everything that all the cast members post, but in the show itself, we blended in the cast members' point of view. Yeah. And the look up. I mean, we had Emmy Award winning cinematographers mm -hmm. and people that are the best in the business of traditional world and capturing yeah. that beautiful mountain and that scenery. Uh, but then building the team is both are equally important. Both have to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Both had dedicated team of, okay, these are shooting the main show. You guys are shooting. You're shooting Steve-O. You're shooting Chuck Liddell. You're shooting Chachi. And go through the ideas with the cast members so that it's in their likeness and what they, their style and yeah. their sound. Uh, and then story teams got to talk together so we know what's happening in their stories and we know what's happening in the main story and then we can blend in the footage right and then it just creates this really beautiful vortex so of... it's like so wonderful so how many crew members did you have out there we had 90 people so many 90 people and it was pretty crazy it looked like a space camp like something that when we we're gonna go to mars that's what the first kind of landing's gonna look like yeah i mean Which uh, they did a great job of making it look like it was just the the nine of you Oh but yeah! Like I know, but and I'm like, where's the crew hiding? I know, and then there's one shot in one of the episodes where like the crew's walking by you, and I'm like, okay, there's a few of them, but I was like, I know that there's more. And you know what? We, I mean, the crew members had these huge cameras yeah. and the sound equipment and everything, and and they're the real champions. Yeah. And the Peruvians too that you know helped us because we had to carry because they're carrying thousands their, of their pounds packs? of gear. Yeah. To uh to the base camp and to the high camp. Um. But yeah, it was it was quite a show. We had a separate sort of uh, production tent area, and then we had the cast member tent, and we had Finnish uh, ex -par uh, parachute rangers, like soldiers, special forces soldiers, running the expedition with the best Peruvian uh, climbers that knew the mountains like the yeah. back of their hands, so we can actually keep everybody safe. Yeah. Um, so we were in one tent area, and 
Yeah, we had people working night and day, production. you know, creating electricity so we can keep everything charged. We were logging things. We were mm-hmm. already editing things yeah. that we could actually hand out content for the for the cast members when they walk out of the base camp. Yeah, as a changed human being. Yes, they're like so new. There's, this is like your your souvenir, but it's a vlog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's twenty two, twenty <laughs> vlogs and two other. <laughs> yes. No, that's so great. And so with 90, 90 crew members, so that's not even just including the cast. So that's like yeah, just that's... the crew. And then you've also got including their... Five plus 500 donkeys. Yes. Oh, my gosh. To carry everything. Because there were some shots where... God, they're bougie. Yes. Oh, the, the <laughs> oh they demand. Yeah? They're yeah. Like, Excuse oh, me. Oh, God. They're like, ha, ha. Got my work hours. <laughs> they're like, we're union. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why Grump, uh, why Eeyore is so grumpy. Yeah. Damn donkeys, dude, dude. So then, like, there's like some shots where there's a crew, like we're seeing the the expeditioners climbing, but like the they're the the camera crew is shooting back, like with a drone or something like that. It's coming back to them. So that's why I was like, there has to be so many crew members for a team to be ahead of everyone, teams to be with everyone, because there was like some points where everybody's separate. Yeah. And, then like, and you can't catch up. Like at that altitude, once somebody goes past you, there's no way you can catch up. Yeah. And if you try to catch up, you're going to fall altitude sick and you're out. Yeah. So that's why you have you to have plan to it beforehand mm-hmm. or just be a Superman. So do you have like some crew that was going like they started a day early, so they were ahead of everyone? Yeah, we all depend on what we were doing. So if we do, if we like one of the one of the one of the 18,000 feet summits that we, we went to, uh, Ishinka is where we went the first time. We actually set camps uh, in there, slept in the camps, and cooked our, our food ourselves. And then mm-hmm. at night time, we started summiting the eighteen thousand foot beast. Um, we uh, we sent out a crew to the summit beforehand, mm-hmm. so they would there they would be there and midway, and come. then so we right. can actually capture everything. And in between, all the cast members had their cameras, and yeah. we had some follow up crew that were coming with us. So it was a big juggle of trying to keep up with. And we had an amazing showrunner, uh, Fred Pichel, who, who, who was in charge of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so it, was, it was a lot to juggle. What a thing to produce. Yeah, like from like just knowing my own productions and like thinking of that and have to have the foresight of like, no, we, we need to have people there a day ahead of time because we, we want to get the beautiful shots of when they get to the base camp or to the summit or wherever, yeah. like whatever the goal is of that day. But we want to like catch if anybody falls behind. Like you just... So much, like or falls set, in the crevasse. So that, the crazy thing is, <laughs> eight people died last year right. trying to summit that mountain. Mm-hmm. So it's a deadly mountain, and the climate change has only made it more dangerous because it's ripped open new crevasses and yeah. broken snow bridges, and um, so it, it, it was absolutely insane. And I got it up there on the mountain. And at some point, I go, "This is just freaking crazy. What are we doing on this mountain with these people? So many people. This mountain." You know, does whatever he wants. If that Chirac ice, blo- block building sized ice block will, you know, decide to break down and fall, it's going to kill all of us. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we're back. We're, we're all home alive and a smile on our faces. Yes. And I think it was an adventure of a lifetime to everybody. Not only the cast, but also the crew. And right. the way we work in Rabbit Films, starting from the Dutch as a stunt show that we, you know, blow up buildings while somebody's standing on top of it. You gotta find a crew that is like a happy fam, big happy family, mm-hmm. that care about it. Isn't there just to pick up a camera at nine a.m. and then five p.m. talk? Like, All right, I'll go home. Like yeah. you gotta care, you gotta feel, you gotta live together. Uh, and I think we had an amazing crew in Ultimate Expedition, and every single person went through the same stuff as the cast member. Yeah, because like you can't not experience these like life changing feelings climbing a mountain. Yeah, you know whether you're there for work or not. You know, like, sure, yeah, that's the assignment. Like, you know, I do things sometimes where you're like, well, okay, that's what the client wants. Great, let's go. But you can't not experience it. Yeah, you're forced to face yourself. And and it was great when I got back from there. Several crew members called me. One particular, the next day I got back, called me. Yuka, after the talks we had, I came back home. I called my employer. I said, I quit because I've been wanting <coughs> to pursue my dream for a long time now. Oh, my God. But I didn't have the guts to do it. And I was so happy for him because he can make it in at least, you know, he'll try. He yeah. can always go back to what he had. Yeah. 
but now he's going to be happy and not regretting it when he's old in a retirement home. That why didn't I never? Why did I never take the bull by the horns? Why didn't I just try? Yeah, good. Oh my gosh, I love that, and that's something that we talk about here on the show a lot. Is like you just got to go do the thing. Like this, we're always trying to inspire people who want to be a filmmaker, but they're like, ah, I don't know. Like I feel like I got to go to film school, or I don't have the resources. Yeah, that's I don't have this, always I don't have that. the that's always the crap, right? You know, yeah. like nowadays everybody's got a cell phone. You just got to yes. pick it up, do and learn by doing do more that's the big yeah. big thing is like there's always these excuses from i don't have the right camera i don't have this just go out there and start doing because that's how you learn and then you produce and then you have that experience in your belt yeah and that's what i want to do is through our vlogs is i want to be an example to push my own limits live my life and learn new things being fearless in a way because people are afraid of the things they don't know about yeah so if it's something silly like i want to you know and swam in a pool full of pythons yeah i hate snakes but i'm like oh, I'll, I'll try and after an hour of swimming i'm just chilling there like they don't bite you they in don't the water. care they don't care they're just chilling. they're just chilling yeah. there's like a 20 foot albino python next to me yeah uh and one King boa looking thing is eyeballing me in the water. It's like what a metaphor for life. Is it like I'm too scared to swim in a pool of snakes, but you did it and you realize they don't bite you. Yeah. And then <laughs> another thing is I always wanted to learn how to fly. Well, last year I got to fly. I took off. I landed. I did whatever hammerhead kind of a death circle with the plane. Like I want to lead by an example, not preach about mm -hmm. a lifestyle, but show it. And yeah, people and fans watching and following will see me do that. Last year I called out, you know, I want to learn a double backflip. Yeah. I learned it. This year I've said, have my hashtag, I'm a dude and goal is, I want to compete in parkour. I want to get my skills to that level. Right. I, saw you I guys will do that place. at some point. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully that'll inspire people when they say their hashtag, I'm a dude and dreams out loud. That's the first step. You say something out loud. Like, I want to be a pro soccer player. I want to be, you know, a hairdresser. Whatever it is, you say it out loud. That's the first step. Then you're already done something about your dream and you're yeah. not just thinking about it. So go out there and do more. Be fearless. What what's the worst thing? Yeah, the, the, the snake's just gonna stare at you and be like, whatever. Yeah. By the way, the snakes. The worst thing is there's an animal handler and it's like, nah, they don't usually bite in the water, unless you swim by them. They think you're prey, and I haven't fed them in six months. Oh. It's like, ah, uh, <laughs> that's gonna help. Thank you. Let's jump in. <laughs> yeah. Well then, with this, like I, I love that, and you're like, go take the like, you know, go get your life essentially. So with this, like having worked in both traditional and in digital, you know, creativity and like producing five pieces of content every week, on top of these bigger projects, what kind of um, tips do you have for somebody who's who is sitting at home, other than like, hey, go do it, like practical tips for someone sitting at home? They're like, man, I wish I could start doing this. Well, God, I'm, I'm, uh, hope you send me, uh, tweet me, yeah, you yeah. can do some tweet me some <laughs> practical tips because I'm still looking. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, and that's, last, that's I mean, last year, as we were uh, working and running the production company, being a dad, um, I was posting seven videos a week, mm -hmm. roughly, um, until we went to do this show. And then I've been kind of like, now I'm back on schedule and we, yeah. got, we got tons of videos coming out. But you got to find, I think you got to find a pace that you can maintain. Mm -hmm. Find formats and your own way of doing things that you can crank out footage yeah. and you don't burn yourself. Think about doing this for a year. Like, can yeah. you keep up? Or then just take a sprint and do what you can and then start thinking about it. But yeah. I, I think the most important thing is just start doing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, um keep your audience up to date what and when you're doing because yeah. they they want to hear they want to care yeah be genuine find but the most important thing is find the passion what you want to do and when you find that passion when you find what really makes you happy and what you're good at doing that's what will find your audience as well yeah it's, it's the passion and then like showing what it is that you do like i like a lot of telling people like tips for creating content because like what am i always doing I'm like i'm always producing i'm always producing so i was like oh well this is obviously something i'm passionate about let me make that the thing that i talk about which is why we created this show yeah you know we're like okay let's let's share this information because i'm passionate about talking about that so whatever it is that you have like yours is showing people how to be fearless right so what do you do go be fearless you go do crazy things to show like hey it doesn't even have to be crazy you know like people have people have things like i'm afraid of public speaking go out there and take a stand-up comedy lesson yeah. or go and give a speech or you know go out there and sing like what happens you, you know you're gonna suck <laughs> like don't be embarrassed just go out there and try because yeah. 
I think life is all about, it's not about success. It's about the most important thing for me is it's good as long as I just give it my best. Yes. As long as I got there, at least tried. And my best isn't always the same. Today, my best might be that I'm really on this level. But tomorrow, if I'm tired because I worked hard, it might not be at this. Like, I might be not as good, but I still did my best for that moment. Yes. So I think it's just give it, be passionate about life and things you do and you care about things and just do your best. Yeah. Eventually, you'll find something that will, will hit and will be good. Good. Oh, or, and also that. be present. I mean, one big passion for me is I'm a father of two beautiful children. Mm -hmm. I go home. I don't talk work calls. I'm there in the moment with them. I give them attention and I do things with them. I genuinely care about them. I go there and I build a, 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 a Death Star out of sofa pillows uh -huh. or a castle. And we play there and I put permanent marker on my face and draw myself into Harry Potter and take a chopstick and I'll pretend to you know put magic on you with pig yeah. ears they love that they feel that they're in the moment and their opinion matters and they'll get a great self-confidence yeah like it all just means that care truly genuinely care about what you do yeah i think that's the core of it like wherever it is whatever point you are it's care about what it is yeah like put some passion into it like if it's time to be with your family be passionate about that if it's time to work be like put all of you can that you can into that and then like your creative things don't yeah. don't let little Yuka be sad inside. Yeah. What does he want to do? Yeah, that really matters. What is it that you want to do? Because mm -hmm. once you find that, you'll be happy and you'll be so much more inspiring and a better person to everybody else. But if you live for somebody else or if you do something that you're kind of keeping your own dreams in the back burner, you'll become a miserable person and you can't really be... how If you're miserable or if you're sad inside, how can you be a great, amazing dad or an employer or employee or friend? Yeah, yeah. be a good person. Be a good person, chase your dreams. I yeah. love it. Thank you much so much love. for chatting with me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And I much. love your positivity. So make sure you let everybody know where they can find your stuff online. You can watch Ultimate Expedition on the Dudeson channel. Yeah, on Dudeson's page. Mm -hmm. And and all my uh, all the shoulder content, all the extra mini episodes. Uh, tomorrow, uh, for example, we just released. What was this? Uh, Gus Kenworthy and me, we went to this parkour place. And we, you know the hole on the wall yeah. show? So we did impossible, impossible Shapes race. So you yeah. had to like double flip through this man that looks like... I saw uh, it. It's <laughs> such a funny vlog. So make sure you guys check that out. And you can also find uh, Yuka on Twitter. At yeah, at Yuka Dudson. Awesome. And, and the same in Instagram. Right Go on. check it out. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you check it out. And we will see you next time on On The Fly Filmmaking. Peace, love, and happiness. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.